here and welcome to a bit of data science and scikit-learn where we learn just a little bit of data science and a lot of scikit-learn. Uh, we've learned a lot so far. Uh, we've learned how to get data sets from scikit-learn. We've learned what estimators are, the fit, the predict, and finally the score method. Uh, and then we've also finally learned what meta estimators are and how to use those. Um, so we're going to be going to a different setting. We're going to be learning new meta estimator. And these are called multi-class and multi-label algorithms. Um, so generally, uh, classification algorithms like logistic regression are really good at doing binary problems, yes or no problems. But when it comes to like big old multi-class problems, like it could be uh, red, green, or blue, uh, it doesn't do so hot. It doesn't do so hot uh, even more, it does even less hot uh, at multi-label algorithms. And so these are the ones where you can be both red, green, blue, and yellow, right? You're, you're a multicolored butterfly you wanna figure out. Um, so let's sort of get started. Uh, one, one of the first things that I wanna show off here is, and I didn't really know where to put this, is, is kind of the problem, is if you have a multi-labeled data set, you'll often have it in terms of little, um, I'll show you it right down here. You'll have it in terms of an array of arrays. So our first guy contains two, three, and four. Our second guy contains two. And if you, if you think these are colors, right, the first guy contains red, green, and blue. Uh, the second guy contains red. The third guy contains purple, uh, uh, orange, and uh, green. And uh, please don't make me remember what these other numbers were. And so you've got your data in this format. Unfortunately, scikit-learn doesn't take data in this type of format, so you need to transform it, which is why they have the multi-label binarizer, um, which will be able to transform your data into a data that's appropriate for scikit-learn. Unfortunately, this is a type of unsupervised learning task that we've not gone into, so it has this new method called fit transform. So don't worry about that. I will be going over that a lot more next episode. Just uh, for now, I'll just sort of memorize, or just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Remember this, this is here. I can sort of show you what this does. Um, and so it would take all of these and turn it into this sort of bucket of zeros and ones. So instead of having one, two, three, and four, and zero, I'll have uh, one, two, three, four, five, a, a sort of a five thing array as, as, my, as my final thing. <clears throat> okay, that's the plug there. Let's get into the content. Um, <clears throat> we only have a couple things. We have a one versus rest, a one versus one, and then an error correcting output code meta estimator. Uh, the final thing I'm going to be showing you is the multiple output and regression, uh, multiple output regression and classification, which is slightly different from the rest. So I'll save that till the end. So let's get started. Um, so we'll start off with one v rest. So one strategy that you can use in order to uh, take a binary classification and turn it into a multiple classification is say, hey, am I red or am I not? And then you use another estimator to say, am I green or am I not? And you use another estimator to say, am I yellow or am I not? So this is like the one versus rest. Um, we can check out uh, what the hyperparameters for this are. <clears throat> it takes an estimator, as you would expect. It's a meta estimator. It takes an estimator and it takes a number of jobs. That's it. Um, it, all the rest is sort of encapsulated inside of it. The number of jobs, remember, this is like how, um, how much parallelization you want. So for example, uh, we can load our iris data set. We can use here, um, let me actually just show you this guy. So this is, this is a uh, support vector classifier, a linear support vector classifier. These are super powerful, aren't as powerful as our ensemble methods, but I, I figured I need to show you these. Um, so. Um, this is, uh, yep, a support vector classifier with a, a kernel that's linear. Um, you've got lots of things down here. But the one thing I wanted to show you <clears throat> is that each classifier in, in scikit-learn actually comes with a multi-class string. Okay, so multi-class string, one verse rest or Kramer Singer. Um, the default is one verse rest. Um, Literally, the idea here is that if I use this, and you've seen this before with logistic regression, this is a binary classifier, but it was used to predict iris, which has three classes. How is it done? Um, and if you even remember before, um, something I glossed over is that logistic regression has a single parameter um, for each um, uh, so for each factor. So in this case, I, I think there were four parameters, uh, right? 
Uh, so we've got uh, iris, which has four different factors. So logistic regression should have four. So what we looked at the parameters and it had 12. I sort of glossed over it. I was like, oh, just don't look at that. It's behind the scenes. What happened is we used one versus rest and we had to fit three different classifiers. Um, a Satosa versus rest, a, a Versicolor versus rest, and a um, whatever the last one is, Virginico versus rest. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, so the linear SVC, logistic regression, they all have this thing in the background. So why, why do we even use this? You know, the, the basic reason why we use this is because, um, yeah, <laughs> so it, it's, it's because if you want to make a very complex uh, type of classifier, and it's good to know that this happens in the background or else you'll be very confused. Um, so let's just show you what this looks like. Uh, we'll feed our one versus rest classifier, the linear SVC. <clears throat> we'll fit, and then you can check out. It has uh, a number of classes. It has multi-label. It has the score method, uh, 0.96666. I mean, it even has like coefficients. So if we, um, we m dot, I believe, coef, you, you can check out all the coefficients for this. And again, there's, um, uh, there's one for each factor, and then you've got three estimators in truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's good. Um, now, as I told you before, the linear SVC actually has this built in. So you didn't even really need to use this. Wait, so we've got uh, 0 0.9666. Um, <clears throat> the times when you would use this, are when these classifiers don't have it built in. They almost all do. So, <laughs> um, or if you built your own classifier, right, out of other out of other building blocks in the scikit-learn library. So I had to show you it. Um, the next thing that you can do is a one verse one type of classifier. And you might be interpreting this as pretty easy. So you build um, one classifier that is red versus blue, one that is blue versus green, one that is red versus green, one that is green versus blue. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll build literally all the combinations of, of classifiers. You, the number of classes, choose two. Um, so you can check this out. It is, again, just, just a meta classifier. Um, it takes an estimator and a number of jobs. Um, we can uh, fit it using the SVC. We can check out the estimators. We just have three, because um, three choose two is three. <clears throat> and we can score it. Um, so pretty simple. Uh, when would you use uh, one versus one versus one v rest? Um, I talk about it a little bit up here. <clears throat> this is usually slower uh, than one versus rest due to this number of classes, but it might be advantageous for algorithms uh, that don't scale well with number of samples. So, okay. And the final thing to do is the error correcting output codes. I've never used this before. Let me just tell you, but it was here. So I, I decided to sort of include this. Um, uh, this idea is that each sort of like multi, each class gets its own like binary code, right? And then, and then you train a certain number of classifiers in order to predict the digits of that binary code. Um, so if you're dealing with tons of classes, that might not be too bad. Um, then again, you're not gonna be getting great performance. <clears throat> So I'll show you it here. You have a little bit more stuff. You have an estimator, and then you have the code size, which is super important, you know, the number of jobs. So for example, we're using code size of two. So using two digits, um, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, fit, show you the estimators, right? Um, we have a lot of estimators, so it's like somewhat unfortunate. Um, and then you can score. Um, so again, very, very similar uh, to the other meta estimators. Um, again, I, I've never used this before. Um, it gives you a little bit more control uh, than, the, and than the other guys, uh, but generally speaking, I just use one versus rest. So. And then finally, multi-output regression and classification. Um, the idea here is that um, you know, you've, got a single, uh, you, you've got a single problem that has multiple outputs. So, you know, given a specific uh, housing data set, you want to say what the price of the house is and how old the previous residents are. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to do that, then you, what you'll need is a, a multi-output regressor. Um, and so, um, 
and sort of show you uh, what this looks like, uh, I go ahead and I use a generator. Uh, so this make regression, this is, remember, it's a generator for data. Uh, I make a regression with three targets, and then I go ahead and I, I fit a gradient boosting regressor to it and score it. So we did really well because this is a gradient boosting regressor. It's, it's powerful. <laughs> Very powerful. Um, so I've shown you all of these cool things. Uh, so if you are ever in the situation where you have multiple targets uh, for a specific regression, if you're ever in a situation where you have multiple labels uh, trying to do um, you know, classification only, if you're ever in a situation where you're doing classification with some built classifier that you have that doesn't already natively support 1v rest and stuff like that, these are the guys for you. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, next time we'll be doing some stuff that's a little bit more relevant, a little bit more fun. Okay, thanks guys, and I'll see you next time.